Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm thankful you're here. So today I thought I'd revisit an idea I haven't done in a while and give you some fresh takes on it. And that is to use tool on your cards. I actually had a bunch of tool out that I had used to create big fluffy bows on Christmas packages. And as I was putting it away, I thought I should put this to use on my cards again. I have three different cards for you using the same product so you can get different looks and each one shows a different way to use tool on a window. I also added some shaker elements but you could skip that if you wanted to. I have done videos with tool in the past and I'll link to those at the end of this video. I feel like the more ideas you have for a technique the better because that way you can find products that you already have that you can use to try it out. Okay, for all of my cards, I'm using the newest Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for January 2021. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm a fan of their kits because the value is half the cost generally. There's a lot in these that can be used over and over. So there's a six by eight stamp set, all the dies that you see, and some accessories. I focus on using the stamps and dies in my videos because those can be used over and over. One thing I want to note, there is a large floral image in the stamp set that covers a card beautifully. You can easily stamp it and cut out individual flowers and kind of get a layered look. I didn't use it today, but I wanted to mention that because it's a beautiful stamp. I decided to use the little bee images. I just thought that would be fun for a set of three cards. So here are the coordinating dies that come with the stamp set. That's the stamp set there, although mine's a prototype, so it doesn't have the printed clear sheet on it. But you can see how big that floral image is. Anyway, I will be using the B and the coordinating die, and also that hexagon die over there on the left. If you don't have anything like this die, no worries. You can use any open shape die to create these tool window cards. I thought this one was a little more interesting. It would make for a fun card design. Now I'm making three cards here today. I started out with plans for more. I have four pieces of cardstock here. They are all cut to four by five and a quarter. So a little bit smaller than what my note card will be. I'm covering the back of each of these cardstock pieces with double-sided adhesive. I really like the Altenew adhesive sheets. These die cut beautifully and hold really well. So each of these pieces, which will be the front panel of my card, will have double-sided adhesive on the back. If you don't have adhesive sheets, that's okay. You can skip this part and later use a liquid adhesive to put everything together but I found this to be a huge time saver for today's technique. Next, I have the die from the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit. Again, any large open die would work here. I'm kind of centering it towards the top center of one of our cardstock backgrounds. Remember, there is adhesive already on the back. And check out the cool window that it cuts. I'm gonna keep all those little hexagons and I might add them back into my card later. So I'll pop them all out and then scoop them up and put them into a little bowl. I like having a little bowl handy all the time when I'm crafting, so I can put pieces there for safe keeping as I craft. I will then do the same with the other pieces of cardstock that I added the adhesive to the back of. So basically, I have a handful of cardstock with this die cut window and adhesive on the back of it. Okay, next I thought I'd stamp a background stamp on all of these. I should have done it before I die cut, but I didn't think of it at the time. I have my Misty stamping tool and I put a sticky mat in there with the stickiness facing up. That will hold my cardstock on it as I stamp. I also have a background stamp from Hero Arts called Bees and Flowers Stamp. Putting that in the corner of my Misty and closing the door to catch it. Now I'll take my background and I will line it up on the stamp. So I just put it over there face down, making sure it's all covered. I'll close my Misty upside down and the sticky mat will grab hold of the cardstock and hold it in place as I stamp. This will allow me to double or triple stamp if I want my ink to be darker or if I didn't get a good impression the first time. I'm stamping this light color cardstock with Hero Arts Soft Pool ink, my most used color of all time. And I'll go ahead and double stamp that just so it shows up a bit more. I use the same background stamp, but stamped with Hero Arts Soft Vanilla ink on the other backgrounds. 
Now I have four backgrounds here. We ended up only using three in today's video, but I did stamp a sentiment on the bottom of each. The You're Beautiful is from the kit that I showed you earlier. And the Just Because is from this Hero Arts Bees and Flowers wreath stamp set. This would be a great stamp set to create a hexagon shape wreath, which I think is fun and unique. Okay, let's get started with our first card. This one has a layered tool shaker window. You can skip the shaker if you want, but there's a lot of dimension to this and I put a lot of detail into it. It's the most involved. The others are a little bit simpler, but I thought it'd be good to start with this one. So I have my first background and remember that die cut background has the adhesive on the back. I also cut three pieces of white cardstock to be slightly smaller. These will be used to build the walls and dimension behind our window. I like to use an inexpensive heavyweight white cardstock for things like this, and I'll link to the one that I use below. So I have three pieces of that cardstock cut smaller than the blue piece. On one of them, I'm putting another piece of that double-sided adhesive. Again, you could skip that if you want to. It just is gonna save me time. But the other white cardstock, I leave as is. Next, we need to die cut the same die from those pieces of white cardstock in the same position. What I like to do is hold the piece to the back of our main panel, kind of centered back there, and then trace around that window. This is hard to trace, so I'm just filling in a few of the hexagons. That'll help me line up my die. Okay, so now I can remove this panel from the top, line up with the die with those little hexagons that we traced, and then run that through our die cut machine. That way I can be sure this hexagon window is in the same position on this white cardstock as it is on the blue panel. This happens to be the one with the adhesive on the back. So now we have that one covered or cut too. And we can do the same thing with the other pieces of cardstock. There are a few different ways you could do this process where you end up with the die cut window on each of the pieces in the same spot, but I found this to be the cleanest and the most effective. Okay, so I'll continue to do the same on all the pieces, and I end up with three pieces of white cardstock with the window open, one piece of white cardstock with the window open and adhesive on the back, and then our front panel that has the adhesive on the back. Seems complicated, but you'll see it really isn't a big deal. Okay, next I have some tool. I have basic white tool here. This is very inexpensive. I've had it for years. I like to do quick bows on my presents with this. We do a lot of crafts with it, but it works great on cards. If you want to build up layers, you just simply fold it over. It's thin. You can color it with your Copic markers or press your ink pad onto it. So that's why I just stick with white because I can change it to whatever color I want. So I'm just gonna cut pieces out of this to use on my cards. Basically, I'm using tool on my windows instead of an acetate piece. Okay, so now we have our front panel, the blue panel. I removed the release paper, and I'm laying a piece of tool right onto that adhesive stretched across the window. It's hard to see, but you'll see it later. And I'll use the release paper to really press it down into that adhesive. Sorry my head gets in the way here, but I'll take one of my white die cut pieces and line it up right onto that adhesive. So now the tool is sandwiched between the blue and the white, and we're starting to build up those layers behind our front panel. So once you have it lined up, all you have to do is press it down with your bone folder and it'll stay put. Now I used a double-sided adhesive sheet before I die cut. If you didn't do that, all you needed to do was use some sort of adhesive, either liquid or double-sided tape, to glue these layers together with the tool between. I just found that adhesive sheet was handy with the detail on this particular die cut window. Okay, so now we need to glue our other white die cut pieces um, on there too to build up some dimension. This time I thought I would use spray adhesive. I could have used adhesive sheets on these too, but spray adhesive seemed a little more economical. So I sprayed the white cardstock die cut window piece and I lined it up there. So we're just building cardstock layers behind our front panel. You don't need to do as many layers as I did. I like layers and also I wanted my shaker bits to move around really well in there. So that's why I have so many layers back there. Scrap paper would work for this. I used an inexpensive heavyweight white cardstock for it. Okay, so now it's that final layer that we have die cut. This is the white die cut piece with adhesive on the back. On the front of it, I'll spray some adhesive and now I'll line that up. 
So now we have this layered window panel. On the front is the blue cardstock. On the back is some adhesive sheet, which will make it a lot easier when we assemble our shaker card. Okay, now we need some bees to put in the center of our windows. So I stamped them on white cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest, which I find stamps beautifully and you can use with many different mediums, including Copic markers. So I'm doing some quick coloring here. I never spend much time coloring because it's not my jam, but you could definitely go to town on these. You could do watercolor, you could add sparkle, whatever you want. Now another option here that would be fun is to just gold heat emboss the bees. Okay, after I colored them, I used the coordinating die to cut them out, and I die cut some extra bees just from white cardstock. On the back of one of them, I put a little piece of double-sided adhesive, and I'll place that right onto the tool. Now I'm using the grid lines on my work surface to make sure that it's straight, and I'll press it right down onto that. Okay, now I wanted to have something strong behind the bee so he doesn't get squished in the mail. So I just put three foam dots behind him. That way the little shaker sequins we put inside can move behind him and around easily. Now you can put anything you want in that shaker window. I dug through some really old ones that I have. Some are from Lucy's cards, some are from uh, Cat Scrappiness, and some are from Studio Calico. But I just have some flat flowers, some are cream, some are iridescent. I didn't want a whole lot in there, but you could put other sequins or gems in there. You just don't want it to be so small that it goes through the holes of the tool. If you are extra worried, you could always double up the layer of tool, and that would be a little more secure. You saw me put a little anti-static powder in there. That's because I forgot that the double-sided tape that we put on our B was exposed, and that removed the stickiness. Okay, now I can remove the release paper from our foam dots and from this panel. I have another piece of white cardstock sitting here that is a little bit smaller than four by five and a quarter that I'll place on top to seal our shaker window closed. Once it's placed there, I'll use my bone folder really to press in that adhesive. So now we have this shaker element with lots of dimension. It's very strong, it'll hold up in the mail, and you can see how our little flowers float around behind our bee. I have a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I made that from the Nina Classic Crest 110 pound because it's nice and thick. We have a heavy front to our card, so I wanna make sure that the card base is strong and it doesn't flop over as you hold it. Next, I thought it'd be fun to pop a little bit of interest into those little openings. So in some of those little hexagon openings, I layered a few of my leftover pieces together. Remember how I kept my leftover pieces in a little bowl? I'm just gluing those right on top of the tool into some of those openings. Some of those are stacked with white die cuts, some are cr like a cream color, and I made a few of them gold. So here's a look at the final card. I like that it has kind of a soft feel to it. And the little pieces that we have in there moving around aren't too distracting because I use soft colors. And I did build up a lot of layers here. You could have skipped all the layers of white cardstock and instead used craft foam and die cut your window for craft foam for the dimension. There are many different ways you could have done it. I just felt this made for a nice strong and dimensional card. Okay, let's go to our second example. This one looks very similar, but it's quite different in that it doesn't have nearly as much dimension, and you can see through the window to the inside of the card. Now remember, I already have that craft cardstock panel that's been stamped and die cut and has adhesive on the back. I also have a top folding note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm not doing any additional layers between those this time. On the front of that white note card, I'm putting a smaller piece of double-sided adhesive. This is a little bit smaller than four by five and a quarter. Again, the double-sided adhesive sheet just makes it so much easier to do, but you could skip it if you have a less intricate die. Okay, so now I need to die cut through the front of our card. So I'm doing that trick where I line up the panel and I color in some of those little, um, little hexagons so I know where to place my die. Again, there are other ways to do this, but this gave the best results. Now I line up the die with those little colored spots, open up my note card, make sure it's open, and then run it through your die cut machine. That'll cut a window through the front of your note card in the same place as it is on the craft cardstock. So now we can put that right on the front of the card when we're ready. 
But first we need to put a piece of tool in place. So I removed the release paper from the front of our note card and I'm laying a piece of tool over it. You could color this first, remember if you want to. You could double it up too if you want. But I like the softness of the white and I also like that the tool kind of goes along with the hexagon pattern. I then can use the leftover release paper to press that on to make sure that the tool is pressed into the adhesive. Now I have my craft panel and I'll do the same thing with that. Remove the release paper and put a piece of tool across it. The reason I have tool on both of these is they'll get sandwiched together with some little sequins floating between. Remember this is a see-through card, the window is see-through. So the front and the back of the shaker window will be tool. I think this is my favorite version because you really can see the tool more effectively with this technique. Okay, now we can add our little bits in here. Now these aren't gonna move around because I didn't build up layers of dimension. If you wanted to build up layers of dimension, it would shake more. I'm just instead having these little flower sequins in here sandwiched between two layers of tulle. They can move a little bit around in there, not a whole lot. It's more like they're floating there. So if you want movement, be sure to put more layers here, kind of like we did in the last example, but with tool in the back and the front. These are just kind of sandwiched in there and it really gives a cool look. Now I have another B that I'm putting double-sided tape on the back of and putting it right into the center of the tool on the front. Then I have another die cut B that's not colored that I glued to the back so that it has a nice finished look on the back too. Okay, next I decided to fill in a few of those open hexagons with pops of color, just like I did on the last example. But this time I need something behind it, because remember this is open. So I glued some hexagons to the front using liquid adhesive. So they're glued to the tool piece there. But then I flipped it over and I also put some little hexagons there too, just so that it kind of could be secure there and look nice from the back. Now little things like this take a little bit of time to do but I think those are the details that really make a big difference on a handmade card. So here is a look at the completed card. You can see I did some gold hexagons, white and cream colored, and they're all floating on that window die cut that we did. I like that this die has those additional little openings, but remember, you could do the same tool window card with any large open die that you may have or a punch, or you can cut your own hole. With this option, you can have that see-through effect that allows you to see on the inside, and you have the floating little sequins too. Okay, for our third example today, it's a little bit similar to our first one, but I made the shaker window a bit bigger so we could have more movement, and I used a flower die cut instead of the stamped B. So here I have the Hero Arts Bees and Flowers die set. I die cut the B and the flower from white cardstock, and I'm adding color with Copic markers. Here's what the die set looks like. It has two bees, a few flowers, and even a little dash line for bee trail. I just stamped from white cardstock and the Copic markers make it very easy to add color, but you could also add color with any markers or colored pencils or watercolor. Off screen, I prepared the panels to form our shaker window. It's similar to our first example, but a bit different. So this panel here is white cardstock. It's slightly smaller than four by five and a quarter. I have adhesive sheet on the back of it and the die cut window. I also have at the top right two pieces of white cardstock of the same size without adhesive on the back with the die cut window. This is very similar to our first card again. This time I'm cutting out the hexagon pattern. See I'm cutting those little thin lines right up against the outside edge. So we have a giant window. That'll allow our shaker bits to move around and that leftover piece we can use on another card. So I cut around the inside of all three of these additional pieces. Not our front panel with the stamping on it, but the other ones. So from the front it looks detailed, but on the inside it's just one giant shaker window. So as I did for, with the first card, I'm gluing these layers together to form the dimension and the walls for our shaker window. I did one less layer on this example than I did the first one, but it worked just fine. Okay, so I glued all those extra white cardstock pieces together, and on the back of that is the piece that has the double-sided adhesive. So now we have that here, nice and thick, and then our front panel. I'm removing the release paper from this and laying a piece of tool across the window, just as we did before. 
After I've pressed that in place and trimmed off the extra tool, I will flip this over and use my anti-static powder tool along the inside there because remember that detailed hexagon pattern, the hive, it has adhesive on the back. By using anti-static powder tool, it removes that stick. On the front of our tool window, I'll add the top of our flower. I did cut off the stem. And there you can see the liquid adhesive is still showing through. That's okay, we'll fix that later. And I'm putting two foam dots on the back of that. I'll do the same with the little bee that'll be resting on the flower. Put liquid adhesive on it, glue it to the front of the tool, and then flip it over and on the back, I'll put another foam dot. Not too many foam dots back there because we want the little sequins to be able to move around and behind it. On the front, I added the stem back in place with some liquid adhesive, and I gave that some time to dry. After it was dry, I used my anti-static powder bag right onto where the adhesive was, the liquid adhesive, to remove that stick again. That way when we put shaker uh, sequins in there, they'll still be able to move around. Now I'm filling this large window with some of those same sequins. You can use whatever you have on hand. So this is a much bigger window because remember we cut out the detail from the wall layers that we built. Once I filled it with lots of little bits, I removed the release paper and also the release paper from those foam dots. And I have a piece of blue cardstock that is a little bit smaller than four by five and a quarter that I'll place on top to seal it closed. Always use a bone folder to really press it in place before you try to shake it, because if it's not pressed in place, you could have a mess on your hands. So I added that panel to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, but I might change it out to be a blue note card. I'm not sure yet. Now this one has a lot of movement on the inside. Those little sequins move around quite a bit in that large open area, but you still have the detail on the front panel. It's hard to kind of see the mo movement here because I used soft colors. You can use more bold colors if you want it to be more obvious, but I wanted to go for a soft look. But in real life, the iridescent sequins catch the light nicely and you can see the movement. Before we go, I just wanted to share a few more ideas that would work great with a tool window. I don't always have time to make all the cards for all my ideas and my videos would be way too long, so I just thought I would talk about some of them too. This is the Hero Arts Floral Love stamp set. So you have the letters love, the heart, and then there are coordinating dies that cut those out. I thought it would be fun to do a large tool shaker window, maybe cut from a rectangle on the front of a card and have the love letters floating on top of the tool with lots of little heart sequins on the inside. I thought that would be neat. You could also do a smaller tool window die cut with the heart and have the stamped heart behind the tool with the shaker bits floating on top. Many ways you can assemble tool cards using stamps and dies you already have. Remember this Hero Arts Bees and Flowers wreath set? You could actually die cut and create a large hexagon tool window and then stamp bees and flowers and die cut them and have them floating on the inside. So that would be the movement. You could also use the new Hero Arts Hexagon Infinity die set. This is a great one to do a large hexagon window and have a smaller hexagon floating on top of that where you put a little sentiment. That would be a great basic design that you could add any stamps you want to. All right, there you have lots of ideas for creating tool window cards. It's a great way to use an inexpensive product with things you already have to create a really soft and fun look. I also think shaker cards with a tool window are nice and soft compared to an acetate window or transparent window. If you are interested in the products I use, I always link them below in my YouTube description. Also here in the middle are the two other tool videos that I've done that I think you might like. And my blog is linked in the top right if you want to see more photos or find more information. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by giving me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon, very soon, with another technique video.